Here we go. Oh God! So yeah, that flight didn't go nearly as well as I would have hoped. There's uh, there's a lot going on there, so let's uh, let's unpack it here. This is uh, the previous flight, so that's what we were more or less going for. The second version of my SLS, which I've kind of called Mach 2, which again doesn't line up with the actual SLS naming structure, but whatever. It has additional features to the original one. It's a lot lighter. It has outboard ignition system instead of onboard ignition. The boosters no longer have fixed uh, engines. They have thrust vector controlled engines. It's a one axis thrust vector control though, so it only handles roll really. I spent a while enhancing the boosters, driving the size up a little bit, altering the pad. The, the whole design of my launch pad is kind of catered around this new version of my SLS so that I can fly everything off of the same launch pad. The new flight computer is also inside of it, so this is during assembly, but it's uh, significantly lighter. So this is the biggest weight savings on the entire vehicle. The original flight computer weighed in at well over 250 grams. The new one is uh, just about 80, so pretty significant weight loss there. Now, for my flight, I think the main issue was in the hold downs. The vehicle rests on the pad with the boosters supported by outboard riser plates. The risers just kind of support the boosters and keep them from falling off while it's on the launch pad, but the launch clamps are supposed to actually retain the rocket under the thrust. There's only four of them, so they can't actually withstand too much load. The core engine is the only engine that they're intended to hold back. They cannot withstand the full stack. But I'm pretty sure during the flight, that's exactly what happened. So the thrust vector system seemed to work pretty well. So I was pretty confident in that. There was decent amount of wiring checks on everything. So everything was for sure wired up correctly. And the main issue during my first flight was boosters not disconnecting. So the Block 2 was intended to alleviate this with the new better booster that had better mounts and would disconnect a lot better. So I, I tested the separation mechanism a lot. The weight between the first version of the SLS, the Block 1, and the Block 2 are pretty similar with a lot of enhancements though into the actual performance. So where I lost mass in avionics and structural components, I gained mass back in engine propellants uh, by upgrading the outboard engines to an F engine instead of an E, and adding the thrust vector mechanisms in. Performance-wise, it was supposed to end up coming in a little over 80 meters with booster separation as the engine burns out. This allows the core to outperform it and pull away from the boosters and they just kind of naturally fall off is the idea. To do this you have to time everything correctly. So all of that timing is really really critical. You have to have the boosters triggered and the core triggered so that they don't overshadow each other. The core has to always underperform the booster for the booster to remain intact with the core. As soon as the core begins producing more thrust, it flies away from the boosters and they separate. The original way I had intended on this was just offsetting the amount of time that we hold down the rocket and then release it. But in the end, this didn't really prove to work out, and we'll, we'll kind of see why. From the air, you can kind of see a little more of what happened. There is an initial fallover of the whole stack, and impacting the ground, both boosters disconnect. 
I will say that they seem to have performed pretty similarly, but one ended up catching some air while the other one just kind of went off along the ground. Sadly, this delays my upgrade schedule for the whole vehicle. The, the SLS that I have is intended to be upgraded to the Block 1B, which in real life has an upper stage. I have the carrying mass to be able to lift the upper stage, but with the issue on takeoff, I'm not confident enough to fly anything like that until I prove that the first stage system all works correctly and the boosters can fall away properly. Although, even though I can't implement it, I have already built most of the upper stage and have it kind of on standby for when the day comes. After a few little upgrades to it, it'll be finally in use, but again, I have to prove that the first stage system can actually fly it. So if we run through things in slow motion, we can kind of get a better idea of what's going on here. So at ignition, the core engine should ignite at the same time as the boosters. This is just based on the assumption that all the igniters work the same, which in the end was wrong. So at ignition, you can immediately see that there is no flame coming out of the core engine. From there, the boosters begin to fire up and you can actually see them lift and the whole stack begin to strain under the thrust. At core ignition, the boosters have already been burning for about half a second. And then everything begins to disconnect from the vehicle. Oddly enough, the right side booster nose cone ends up just popping off as soon as the engines ignite. I guess there may have been some sort of an overpressure shoving the nose cone off of the stack, or it just wasn't fitted tight enough into the tube. I don't know. The other side didn't, oddly enough. Then we have a strong back retract, and once the strong back begins to retract, my nearest guess is it begins to take the whole stack down with it, and the vectoring system is unable to compensate fast enough because the rocket's still held down. As it begins to fall, it slips out of its mounts, and we see it go almost all the way sideways, and everything just kind of flail violently until the boosters find a way to disconnect. Then eventually you see the smoke kind of clear and one of the side boosters end up taking flight until it eventually pops the parachute. So that worked all right. After investigating some of the parts and dismantling the vehicle, I found that the thrust vector system in the booster is wholly inadequate to withstand the actual thrust going on. The single steel screw that goes through the length of it seems to have broken the structure inside of the 3D printed mechanism, so that's definite no-go for the future. I may need a redesign to make sure that it stays straight and it only moves in one axis, or I may move to a compliant mechanism like my Falcon 9. For now, this project's kind of on hold. This flight's pretty expensive. It's really upsetting to see all of those engines burn without anything flying anywhere, and it's the one thing I didn't really plan on. I've seen the rockets fly sideways, go up and not quite maintain course, go up and fly relatively straight and not open a parachute, but just falling over on the launch pad was definitely something I wasn't prepared for, so it was a huge disappointment. Hopefully we'll have a second flight of this thing real soon, and in that attempt I hope to nail it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. I don't upload very often, so if, uh, if you subscribe you'll be the first to know when I upload another video. And if you want to support the project and see these things come about a little faster, uh, Patreon is a great way to support things. And uh, I, I leave all of my files on there so that if you want a SLS or a Falcon 9 or even this fancy launch pad of your own, you can go in and you can get all that. So thanks.